Hi everyone, this time we will learn how to insert multiple rows in a single transaction, mainly it is necessary to insert the details of a table, the most common is the sale detail, we will use C sharp language, Windows form, SQL server and object oriented programming. This operation is also known as massive data insertion. For example, here I have 10,000 rows that were correctly inserted individually. Now how to do this from our application? Well there are many ways to do it, from a basic level, intermediate, advanced, efficient, not efficient, with good practices or bad practices, and being honest, it was difficult to choose which method to use in this tutorial, since many are just starting in the programming world, and others already have solid and advanced knowledge. However, performing basic tutorials leads to bad practices inefficient and less safe. For example, on many occasions when we are beginners we do this, we execute each transaction to insert multiple rows through a loop. The first error is to open and close the connection in each loop, that has a serious impact on the database, in the same way it happens if you execute the loop from the presentation or business layer, keep in mind that the loop must always be run in the data access layer. The second error is to concatenate the values in the text command, mainly this entails two inconveniences. First, we are introducing security holes, that is, it is totally vulnerable to SQL injection. We also have to deal with things like the proper format of dates and put quotes around the text, and that is tedious. The correct way is to use parameterized queries, that is, to use parameters to facilitate the appropriate format of dates and text and mainly avoid injection. Also keep in mind that the connection must be open before the loop, and close the connection after the loop. However, this does not guarantee that all data is inserted correctly, for example, suppose we will insert 10,000 rows, and in one of the fields we insert incorrect or null data. As a result two rows were not inserted. In the worst case, Imagine that only 5,000 rows were inserted, and 5,000 rows were not inserted, that would be a serious problem. To solve the problem, we must trap all SQL instructions in a transaction and dump the data in a single transaction. If in case any unexpected error occurs, we simply reverse everything. That is, it will erase everything and no rows will be inserted, imagine that it is like returning in time and leaving it as it was before starting the transaction. On the other hand, many programmers prohibit the use of the add with value method, I disagree, use it or not depends on many cases, although it is true that it has the disadvantage of having to infer the type of data in the database for its query parameter, and in many cases this conversion is wrong, and the operation is expensive if you have thousands and thousands of rows in a table. Therefore, the solution is to know the type of data and then create a query parameter that uses this exact type. Obviously it is not mandatory, we can continue using the add with value method directly, having clear the type of data and if it is done small queries, or the application and the database is small, in addition it does not make sense to declare the parameters again if stored procedures are used, since they already declare the parameters with the data types. In that case we must use the method add with value. And as I mentioned earlier, we must trap the instructions in a transaction, and dump the data into a single transaction. In case an error occurs, we simply reverse everything. We also have to use using blocks, that way discard the object's SQL connection, SQL command, or any other that implements the disposable interface. That way it is not necessary to close the connection or clean the parameters. It is also possible to execute a single text command, which turns out to be more efficient if a small number of rows is inserted. This method is limited to 2100 parameters. However, if a large amount is inserted, it is better to execute the command in each loop, instead of creating a huge text command. On the other hand, we can also execute only one insert command with multiple values, coding we would have in this way, where we load the values through a loop. However this is limited, it is only possible to insert a thousand rows per instruction. Also keep in mind that the maximum number of parameters is 2100 parameters. 
so the best approach to insert small numbers of rows is to insert multiple declarations in a single transaction, have a single parameter for each field and change the value in each loop, but it turns out to be less efficient when we insert hundreds or thousands of rows. We can also do it using the update method of the SQL data adapter class. Changes can be sent to the server individually or in groups. However, each statement is executed separately on the server, therefore you must also wrap the instructions in a transaction. If we look for speed and efficiency in a series of individual inserts, we can use table-valued parameters, either through an SQL statement or through a stored procedure. Table-valued parameters benefit from temporary caching, which allows for better scalability and also has a lower startup cost. However, it works well to insert less than 1000 rows. When the 1000 rows are exceeded, performance decreases rapidly as the rows increase. Then we can use bulk insert that will allow us to insert hundreds or thousands of rows with a little more performance and efficiency. The data can be fed from an XML or Excel file, however it has a higher startup cost. On the other hand, we can use the mass copy class of SQL, where it is simply necessary to load the data from a data table or data reader. You can insert up to 500,000 rows with considerable performance, then the performance decreases. Of course we can also use frameworks as an entity framework, or dapper, which makes things easier and simpler. In conclusion, the SQL bulk copy class and the table valued parameters, are the most efficient if it involves inserting hundreds or thousands of data. Instead, you will only insert a few tens of rows. The examples above will suffice, since by using small row insertion operations, better performance can be obtained instead of SQL bulk copy or table valued parameters. Well, let's start with the tutorial. This time I will teach you how to insert multiple rows with the SQL bulk copy class. We have the database a table, for example, sales detail, ID fields, which is auto increment and primary key, description, units and amount. Finally we create the database. Now let's move on to Visual Studio, and create a new Windows application project form in C Sharp. It is very important to have a good structure or architecture, separate responsibilities and have everything ordered in our project and application. You can choose an architecture pattern, as a model view controller, model view presenter, layered architecture, or one customized by yourself, by for example, my application will only have two components. I will create a folder for the views, in this component all my forms will be and your responsibility will be the handling of the user interfaces. I will add another folder for the models. Your responsibility will be to manage all the data and the management of the rules and business logic. Well, let's add the connection class to SQL Server. We import the data SQL client library. We create a simple static method of type SQL connection to get the connection. Here we simply return an instance of SQL connection. As a parameter we send the connection string. Local server, we indicate the database, and we connect using Windows credentials. We add another class for the detail sale model. We declare the necessary attributes. I will directly create the properties. Remember that the data types must be the same or similar to the columns in the sales detail table of the database. You can create the attributes of the entity in a separate class. Well, now we will create an empty public method to insert multiple rows. As an input parameter, we declare an enumerable interface or list of sale detail type, name details list. We import the data libraries and data SQL client. First we create a table. Table will be e equal to new data table object. Now we need to create the columns. The columns must have the same order as it is in the database. It is not so important that it has the same name, but it does have certain benefits. Well, 
Let's add the columns with their respective type of data. Once the table and columns have been created, we must now add the data from the parameter detail list. For this we create a for each loop, for item detail in the list of details. In each loop, we add a new row. As a parameter, we send an array of objects, with the ID field, the description, the units and the amount. Do not forget to place the fields properly sorted, just as the data table and the database table were created. They can send a data table directly from the form, I do it with a list of objects, since most of the community with advanced level uses object-oriented programming with layered architecture, or other type of architectural pattern, and it is necessary to transfer the data in objects. You can also create a generic method that converts your list of objects to data table. Well, now we will insert the data from the table to the database. We create a using block, declare the connection variable, which will be equal to the class connection to SQL server and its method of get connection. We open the connection. We create another using block, declare a SQL transaction and start the transaction on the connection. We create another using block, declare the bulk copy of SQL and instantiate. This class needs us to send certain parameters. We have four constructors for this class. The first needs as a parameter, an instance of SQL connection. The second, a connection string. The third, a connection string and a copy option. Finally, a connection instance a copy option and an external transaction. For this case, this is the constructor that interests us, since we are using and it is very important to implement a SQL transaction as I indicated in the introduction of the video. Then as parameters, we send the connection instance, default copy option, and finally we send the transaction. Now we create a try catch block to capture the errors. Within the try block, we indicate the name of the destination table for the mass copy. We must write the name as it is in the database. Then we indicate that you write the data on the server with the data contained in our table. Finally, we indicate that the transaction is executed and can save all changes. In the event of any unexpected error, we simply reverse everything, and optionally close the connection. Remember that the using blocks, guarantees to automatically execute the dispose method of an instance that implements the disposable interface. That is, when we use the using statement, we do not need to explicitly discard the object in the code, the using statement takes care of it. Therefore it is not necessary to close the connection of the SQL connection object, or clean the parameters of SQL command, since the object will also be removed when the codes within the block are executed, and the connection will be closed, without explicitly calling the method close, and this will happen even if an exception occurs in the try catch blocks. Well that's all in this class, remember that you can declare the entity's attributes in a separate class and you can create a single generic method that converts any list of objects into a data table. Well, we go to the form, and insert a data grid view. We add the necessary columns. In this case it is not necessary to add the ID column, since the field is auto increment. Then we only add these three columns. Now I will prepare the logic of my data grid view. I will indicate that no rows are automatically inserted at the end of the rows, and I will add a row manually. 
Now I will have a new row added every time I press the Enter key, and focus on the first cell in the last created row. This is optional, obviously you will add the data from text boxes or another source. I will try the form. Works correctly. Now we will add a button to insert data from the data grid view. We create the click event of the button, and import the models folder. We create an object list from the sale detail class, name will put object detail list. Now, we will insert the data from the rows of the data grid view to our list of objects. To do this, we create a for each block. Declare row of data grid view, and go through the rows of the data grid view of the form. In each loop, we create a sales detail object, and add values to the object's attributes, with the respective values of the cell and row of the data grid view. Then, in the detail object we access the description property, and assign as value the corresponding cell of the data grid view. We can place the name of the column, or the column position. For example the description is the zero position, the unit position one. However it is advisable to indicate the name of the column, since the position can vary and we will have to return to update the application code. We must convert the cell values to the corresponding data type. We do the same for the missing fields. We create another instance of the sales detail model, and we invoke the method of inserting massive data. This method requires that we send a list of objects of sale detail type. Then we send our item details list. In the loop I forgot to add each object in the details list. Then we invoke the add method of the list, and as a parameter we send the detail object. This way we will have a collection of detail objects in the list. Well, we send the list to the method parameter insert massive data. Finally I will show a simple message box, that the data was inserted correctly. You can customize this message, for example, how much data was inserted, or show the transaction errors. Let's test the application. I will insert a few rows of data, and we add. The data was inserted correctly. Now I will insert other data. The application works correctly. In this way we can insert thousands and thousands of data. However remember that if you only need to insert a few rows as in this case, it is better to use these methods shown, since you get better performance and efficiency. Also remember to use parameterized queries to avoid SQL injections. Well I hope you liked the tutorial. Greetings to all and until next time.